Hello everyone. Film has been one of my lifelong passions. I remember watching The Lion King in theaters twice as a kid, and Gladiator had a serious impact on my understanding of what it meant to be a young man. I enjoy cerebral sci-fi, elaborate period dramas, and quick and witty adventure films. I've even been known to watch a foreign film every now and then. But one thing that comes up often in my line of work is Christian films. I get asked about the most recent Kendrick Brothers movie or find myself defending secular takes on Bible stories. We have seen a shift from the early days of Hollywood biblical epics to the corny Christian films we all have in our mind to a more nuanced exploration of faith in a broken world. Today, I want to simplify what really is a complex assortment of films down into three categories. Each has their own strengths and weaknesses because each tends to set out to do something different. We shouldn't judge a film by its ability to do something it never aimed to do. I'm also putting the word Christian in quotes because not all of these films are made by or for Christians. But as they explore biblical stories or themes of Christian faith, they will get lumped together with those made more explicitly for those in the church. It's a tool for our discussion, not a hard and fast rule as to what should constitute a Christian film. In the future, we can discuss whether the label Christian is even helpful in discussing art. But that's for another day. The first category of Christian film is the cinematic sermon. Perhaps most commonly associated with the works of the Kendrick brothers, these movies include the likes of Fireproof, Courageous, God's Not Dead, and the recently released Life Mark. These films are created by Christian pastors and are generally marketed towards those who already claim to be believers. They have a clear message and seem to prefer to sacrifice nuance for clarity. There are good guys who give wisdom, bad guys who offer temptation, and a main character who has to learn the lesson that the pastoral team behind the film wants the audience to walk away with. These films can be encouraging for those believers who are weighed down by life's concerns. They usually portray the brokenness of the world through the lens of a broken person who is far from Jesus. He or she then comes to a place of either giving their life to Jesus or of deepening their relationship with him and finding that this connection to God fixes the problems that plagued their life. Everyone lives happily ever after and God is glorified. The advantage of these movies is that they often portray easy to digest biblical truths. Committing to your marriage relationship, even when it's hard, is better than sinful self-absorption. Committing to be an active father is better than living a life of sinful self-absorption. Committing to defend the faith is better than sinful, you get the picture. All of these are true, and the hope is that believers walk away inspired to commit to their relationships, to pray more fervently, and to believe in the power of their Heavenly Father. The challenge comes from the fact that these stories act more like parables than real life. Rarely is life so cut and dry as, come to Jesus and your life will be perfect. Better, certainly, but God doesn't promise deliverance from everything in this life. But listen to our message and your felt needs might get met, or they might not be, is not as inspirational. The simplicity of these messages leaves some feeling like the story rings hollow, or the characters shallow beyond believability. This type of film has unfortunately suffered from a general lack of funding and experience over the years. The churches that have funded the films have not had the ability to hire the best actors or writers or production teams. However, this has been changing with each film. Christian actors in Hollywood have started putting their talents behind these cinematic sermons, giving better and more nuanced performances. The writers are getting better with each production, and the overall quality of the films has gone up. If this continues, we may find that the cinematic sermons grow into nuanced films that clearly portray the good news of Jesus Christ. The second type of film we're going to talk about is the biblical epic. Since the dawn of celluloid, filmmakers have been trying to capture the stories we find in the Bible on film. The 1950s and 1960s saw classics such as Samson and Delilah, Quo Vadis, and the Ten Commandments hit the silver screen to huge acclaim. Large budgets, groundbreaking visual effects, and celebrity actors brought the miraculous from the page to our eyes. Though the genre slowed down from the 1970s through to the early 2000s, there are still filmmakers who want to retell biblical stories on the big screen. From Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ to Ridley Scott's Exodus, Gods and Kings. Many of these films have become classics, with the passion and financing behind them obvious throughout. 
others have been critically panned, held back by poor writing or inconsistent visuals. Some of the filmmakers have been devout followers of Christ, while others have been avowed atheists. But there's one thing that all of these filmmakers have tried to do. They've tried to use the Bible to tell good stories. Whether we're talking about DeMille's Ten Commandments or Aronofsky's Noah, one of the great strengths of the biblical epic is its ability to breathe life into the text of the Bible. We may have a vague idea of how big Noah's Ark was, but seeing it in a theater gives a new understanding of its vastness. The smile that plays across Jim Cavaziel's face as he portrays Jesus can bring life to the Beatitudes when we read them later. The biblical epics may also draw people into reading the Bible. As they grow curious about the story behind the film or ask questions about the interpretation, many will seek answers from the source itself. And having people read the Bible is never a bad thing. One of the challenges with watching biblical epics is the breadth of belief behind the filmmakers that create them. While DeMille or Downey may be believers seeking to accurately portray a biblical theology in their stories, Aronofsky and Scott are atheists with no desire to bring glory to God through their craft. While this does not invalidate their versions of the stories, we must keep this reality in mind while we interact with their art. Any filmmaker of any background is going to bring something of themselves to the story, and we can't necessarily equate their story with what's actually in the Bible. We need to allow the film to speak to us, but we must be ready to speak back with what we know about God. If we do, we can find a wonderful dialogue that deepens our faith and understanding and opens conversation around faith and belief today. Our final type of film we're discussing today is what I'm going to call films about faith. These are often based on true stories and recount the lives of people who have had meaningful wrestling with their faith. They often do not shy away from any supernatural elements in their protagonist's life, but also don't sugarcoat the real struggles that continue after stepping into faith. These are some of my favorite faith films. Father Stew, a recent film starring Mark Wahlberg, or Silence from director Martin Scorsese are two wonderful examples. These films are often grounded in the reality of the lives of their characters, imbuing the stories with a relatability that the cinematic sermons often fail to capture. They allow for doubt and questioning and failures and redemption. The strength of these films is just that, their relatability. The characters are not well-polished, family-friendly heroes all the time, but they also aren't viewed as crazy for believing in a God that others don't acknowledge. Their lives are often messy and dramatic, and coming to Christ doesn't seem to fix all of that. The focus just moves to the question, how do I live with this faith in such a broken world? And this is a question that we all need to wrestle with. One of the challenges with these films is in finding the right audience. Too many Christians equate faith film with fun for the whole family, which many of these films are definitely not. Skeptics may find the non-judgmental view of faith to be uninteresting or bordering on the fantastical. So the filmmakers are left with adults who are open to the possibility of faith, but not turned off by the inclusion of language, violence, sexuality, or honest questions about faith. But for those who really want to dig into what it means to be a Christian in a world that doesn't always have happy endings on this side of heaven, these films about faith can give us just that opportunity. In conclusion, we must be aware of what kind of films we're going to when we sit down to watch a Christian movie. Each brings something to the table that the others don't, but each has their weaknesses as well. And we shouldn't judge a film by a criteria it never set out to achieve. We can, however, push for stronger writing, better acting, and more polished production value. And I think we should. Stories that wrestle with the idea of faith should have as much artistic integrity as those that wrestle with identity, social struggles, or what constitutes a family. There are so many conversations around the themes of the Bible that wouldn't be had as long as we allow subpar productions to be the jumping off point for dialogue. How about you? What's your favorite film that tackles the idea of faith or the Bible? Do you have a favorite of these three categories we've talked about today? Leave a note down in the comments and be sure to subscribe so that you can stay in the conversation. Blessings to you.